Hello you guys and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and I am a wedding photographer here in the lovely state of North Carolina and today I wanted to talk about if you should discount your wedding photography or just photography prices in general. I've been seeing this question come up a lot in a lot of the photography Facebook groups that I'm a part of and just in general, should you offer discounts or promotions or what? how should you answer a client asking for a discount? We're going to go over all of that in this video. So I assume if you are a photographer, you've probably gotten questions very similar to these from clients asking for a potential discount on your price. These questions are going to be a little bit more geared towards wedding photography, but a lot of the concepts can still be the same for you. And some of the responses, I'm going to give specific responses to these questions. So hopefully if you are doing other forms of photography other than weddings, you can get something out of this too. So some of the discount questions I've been asked are, do you offer any discounts if we pay cash? Do you offer any military for first responder, teacher, anything like that? Do you offer a discount? If we don't want an engagement session, can we get a discount on the package total? And my, ref my friend referred me to you. They used you last year and they only paid this. Can you match that price? We're gonna go over those questions in this video, but first I wanna talk about the big question of should you discount or run a promotion on your photography prices? So the answer to that question is it depends. It depends completely on you and your business. So full disclosure, photography is not my full-time job. Although I would love it to be my full-time job one day, I do have a consistent income. I work a nine to five job in marketing. I think I've mentioned that on this channel before. So it's not the income that me and my family are relying on. I'm also married and we are a dual income household. My husband works a standard nine to five job as well. So we have kind of a fallback option if there's varying aspects in my photography business. I think that's important to note when I'm talking about what to charge, if you should do discounts, anything with anyone's financial situations because number one, I don't wanna assume anybody's financial situations and I wanna know I want you to know where I'm coming from because it may be different for you if this is your full-time job. If it's your full-time gig, if your family is dependent on this income, the advice will probably be different for you than it is for me as someone who is working to make this a full-time job. So if you're like me and you have maybe another job or consistent income or maybe you're married and that person, your significant other, has consistent income in this photography business, maybe you're working towards it being full-time or maybe you're just comfortable with it being a side gig, you probably could get away with doing discounts on your pricing. I'm not saying you should do discounts on your pricing, I'm just saying you probably could get away with it more than somebody who this is their full-time job and their livelihood depends on it. So all of that being said, I really encourage everybody to look at your financial situation first. Everyone's financial situation is different for them and like I said before, I don't wanna assume someone's financial situation because I don't know your financial situation, so definitely Look at your own personal finances as well as calculate your cost of doing business as a photographer. I need to do like a whole video about calculating your cost of doing business. Maybe that'll be next. Um, but I would encourage you, even if this is your full-time job or your side hustle, side gig, whatever it is, do your cost of doing business. This is how you're going to guarantee you be profitable because then you'll know how much you need to charge in order to turn a profit. So what is your cost of doing business? We'll touch on that briefly, but I'll, I'll plan to do a whole video covering this topic in the future. So in short, the cost of doing business is how much money you spend. And that is whether you're doing photography jobs or not. So it can include your living expenses if this is something that you do full time, but it also includes your photography business expenses. So, you know, gear, my website, I pay um, a yearly fee, I guess. 
um, any kind of client delivery software, gas, car, like all of those expenses that go into your photography business are part of your cost of doing business. So even if photography is not your full-time gig, you need to make sure that these costs are being covered with your business. So at the very least, let's say in my situation, this is not my full-time job. All of my living expenses, my husband and I's living expenses are kind of taken care of with our full-time salary. I at least want to make sure that the money I'm putting into my photography business, I'm getting back and more. I wanna be able to pay myself. I wanna be able to upgrade my gear with the money that I make. So you wanna make sure that your photography business is profitable. And again, I'm not gonna assume anyone's financial situations. Maybe you're starting out and you're not earning as much money as you'd like. Maybe you're more like me where we're kind of, I'm kind of in this, uh, stabilization period, maybe you're growing, whatever it is, um, you need to calculate your cost of doing business and how much you need to charge per wedding or per session or whatever that looks like with you. You need to figure out what that number is and kind of go from there to see if you can even give a discount if that's something that you're wanting to do. So that was kind of a long-winded response. Um, for me personally, I, I wanna get into the questions. I have them written right here, so if you see me look down, that's why. I have all the questions here. I wanna get into these specific questions because I answer them slightly different, but I will, again, full disclosure, going into this, I personally don't give discounts on my stuff. Like I don't give discounts on my pricing, on my wedding packages. Let's get into the individual questions that I mentioned in the beginning of this video because each answer might be a little bit different and how I would respond to a client will be a little bit different depending on the question. So the first question that I mentioned was, is there a discount if we pay cash? I think this really started more in the contractor world because I know when Jesse and I were getting our fence done, we had a new fence installed and we asked how much it would be if we paid cash because somebody told us to do that one time and it there was a significant discount for paying it cash. So I think maybe that's where it started. I'm not sure, but I've gotten this question before and for me, it's a no. There's no discount if you... <laughs> There's no discount if you pay cash or card or check or Venmo, like whatever you want to do. There's no discount with that. And I do this because no matter what, I have to pay tax on it. Yes, shoot proof. That's what I use for my invoicing online. Yeah, I pay a fee every time I like transfer the money out. But to me, that's not as significant to then incentivize cash. So I'm not sure why this is necessarily transferred into like the photography world. Like I said, I think it started maybe in the contractor realm. I don't know, but I still have to pay taxes on the same amount. I The fees associated with online invoicing are not that great of an incentive to promote a cash or check exchange. And honestly, it just doesn't beat the convenience of online invoicing or you know venmo or whatever it is it just doesn't be the convenience so for me i offer i don't offer any cash incentive or discount associated with it so this is how i would answer a client if they ask me do you offer a discount if we pay cash i will say hi client name here there aren't any discounts if you pay cash check credit card etc however i can always set up a personal payment plan if that's something that you are interested in i think mentioning a personalized payment plan shoot proof makes it really easy to do like installments so and other programs as well make it really really easy so i think throwing that in there might even ease them because how i do it currently is you pay a deposit and then you pay in full um, before the wedding. So maybe having smaller payments spaced out would be more beneficial to them. And so they might take up on that, you know, take you up on that offer. But that's how I will phrase it. Like, unfortunately, no, there aren't any discounts with the form of payment. However, I can set you up on a payment plan. So this next question is, do you offer a military, a teacher, first responder kind of discount? any of the above, any of those standard discounts, student discount, whatever it is, people might ask you um, if they haven't already. And this is where your personal financial situation and like what you want to personally do comes into play. So me personally, I don't offer discounts on the actual price. I don't give 10% off my package price 
for military or first responder or anything like that. I don't run discounts. And the reason I don't offer discounts is in my opinion, I don't wanna cheapen my work. I don't wanna have a discounted rate on my work. And especially if you do your cost of doing business, you know the threshold in which you need to price yourself to make money. So instead of offering a discount, and again, this is personal opinion, personal experience, instead of offering a discount, I will offer an incentive instead. So I think a great example is a recent wedding that I did actually last year. It's not that recent, it was last year, okay. So a wedding that I did, he was a first responder. They asked if I had any discount and I said, no, but I can add an extra hour onto your wedding day. That's more of an incentive. It's not really a discount. And honestly, I needed that extra hour that day, to be honest. I'm so glad I added it on there. I didn't know at the time, but I'm really glad I added it on there. So that's an example of an incentive versus, oh yeah, you get 5% or 10% off the package price. You could waive travel fees for military members, like whatever you personally want to do um, and you know take it as a case by case basis. But I'm for myself, I kind of, I don't offer discounts on anything. So if somebody asked me this question, this is how I would probably phrase it. So hi, insert name, thank you so much for your service. There aren't any discounts offered at this time, but I can add an extra hour of coverage to your wedding day. So like I said, not a discount, but an incentive. That's how I would probably answer it. But again, like I said, you could waive the travel fee. You could give a discount if you really wanted to. You could maybe give them a print credit or you know, a credit towards an album if you're into weddings. Like That's something that you could possibly do, but you don't have to is what I'm saying. You could stop that sentence after, thank you for your service. Unfortunately, there's no discounts at this time. You could stop it there. You don't have to discount your prices at all. But I'm saying as an idea that is something that I do, I will add an extra hour of coverage, or you could give them a print credit, something like that that adds value to them, not takes the price away and cheapens your work. Does that make sense? Oh, this question that we get so often, probably as photographers in the wedding area is, if I don't want the engagement session, can I get a discount on the package price? I get this question. I want this question probably the most out of all the other ones. So how my wedding collections or how it's set up currently is I have one base package. Starts at eight hours of coverage, has a photographer, complimentary engagement session included, a canvas, like all this stuff. I have a base package and then you can add on from there. So you can add a bridal session, add a coverage, add a second photographer, whatever your heart desires at that point, okay? So I started this base package and because I value engagement sessions so, so much, I want to include it in every single one of my packages. And I'll tell you why I think engagement sessions are important. The connection that you make with your couple before the wedding, in my opinion, is crucial to wedding day. Like how you vibe at the engagement session and how you vibe, you know, that will co correlate with how you vibe at the wedding. So I love connecting with my bride, the groom. I gotta sneeze, hold on. I love connecting with my bride and groom, my couple before their wedding and really becoming friends with them, getting to know them, practicing poses, you know, so I can figure out what they're comfortable with. They can get comfortable with me as a photographer. And honestly, we just vibe. And that translates to wedding day. So if I'm your friend on your engagement session, you totally trust me with your photos, you're gonna trust me then on your wedding day. I also get to meet you and you get to meet me, um, like I said, connections before the wedding day, and you get to see a whole session that is edited from you know start to finish, start being the shoot, the delivery software, the editing that I do, and if you don't like the way that I edit or you don't like me as a person for some reason, like I'm not gonna, no hate here, but if we don't vibe and you wanna go with someone else, that's fine, but that's a great opportunity to make sure that you love your photographer and you love the work that they do in the way that they edit. So if I deliver a gallery to you and you hate the way that I edited the photos, you should probably go with somebody else. Like you should probably go with somebody else that is in your editing style and you can figure all of that stuff out with the engagement session. But for me, I like to know my couple before wedding day because I feel like it builds that 
trust and I feel like they view me as a friend, they trust me on their wedding day and they default to me because we've already had that relationship kind of started. So all that to say, that's why I put engagement sessions in my base packages because I want that connection going into wedding day. So usually I answer the question with, the engagement session is included, so there's no discount if it is not used. Now I have seen some photographers try to translate that, like, and if you don't take it, we can add two hours onto your wedding package, all of that. I don't do any of that, I just say, because I want to encourage them to do the engagement session, I just say it's included, it's complimentary, and there's no discount if it's used or not. Grammar, okay? Um, but usually that's enough. Usually just answering that one sentence, like there's no discount because it's complimentary, is enough for couples to make a decision. And I actually had a couple ask this specific question. They asked for the discount if they don't use the engagement session. And I said, unfortunately, no. And I encourage you to use the engagement session. Um, they were originally going to have their friend I think take their engagement photos, but because it was included and complimentary, they were like, okay, I think we wanna do an engagement session actually with you. And I was like, fan freaking fantastic. And it was one of the best engagement sessions I've done to this date. It was also in one of my favorite places. So that's part of it, but it was beautiful. And again, we got to vibe before the wedding. So when wedding day came up, they fully trusted me with all of the decisions. And it was just a really great time. So. I just encourage my couples to take advantage of the complimentary engagement session because I think they're so important. So if you're answering that question for somebody, you can explain the benefits of an engagement session. And I will say there is a time where I compromise where I won't do the complimentary engagement session and it is if they specifically ask for a bridal session instead. They're both two hours in my packages, so that is the only time I am willing to swap something out because at least I get to meet the bride and be with her and like meet her beforehand. But I do still encourage engagement sessions. I think they're very important, but there is just like a little asterisk disclaimer. That is the only time I will not, or I will compromise and I'll switch out a bridal session for the engagement session. Okay, another last question will be, my friend who used you last year only paid X amount. Can you match that? And I personally have not received this question, but I saw it on Facebook and I thought it was really interesting. So let's talk about it. So I've been actually seeing this question a lot with other like photographer in Facebook groups and other groups on social media. I've been seeing a lot of people are getting questions like these. It's kind of interesting. I don't know. Like I feel like there's random questions that I see a lot and it's just, I don't know. It's interesting, but off topic, okay. Most photographers, especially I would argue in the wedding sphere, adjust their prices mostly every single year or after like X amount of weddings. So there is a rule of thumb, if you are booking a lot of weddings, every third wedding you book, you should up, I think it's third wedding, you should up your prices by $500 or something like that. And until you get to the place where you want to be, and then you can kind of chill. I am one of the photographers. I adjust my prices every single year, if not every few weddings, because you know, you're trying to work towards a specific price point that you wanna be at. And also gear is expensive. Expenses are expensive. And then if this is your full-time job, supporting yourself is expensive. So you need to make sure to turn a profit, which is what we talked about earlier with you know the cost of doing business, figuring out what that is, figuring out how much you need to make every single year. So when I first started out, I did not charge as much as I do right now. And I think that's true for a lot of photographers. When you first start out, you don't charge as much as you do now because you have more experience, you probably have better gear. I have significantly better gear than when I originally started my photography business. And more experience, more expertise, like you just, you have more, you have more connections with places. If you've done weddings a lot more, you know, you might have more vendor connections. That's, that is worth something. So you've gotten better than that original price point. And so your price point should reflect your level of experience, your gear, everything in your business. 
And I know one thing, I definitely edit photos way better than I did when I first started out. So there's also that. So I try to increase my price once a year. You know, usually around the new year, I will increase my price. And I think that's pretty standard amongst a lot of other wedding photographers. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I've heard from other photographer friends of mine. There is a whole other conversation about when you, uh, when it's like the right time to raise your price. That's a whole other conversation, video, whatever, like that's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about you adjusting your prices and somebody asking you to match one before. So even if you raise your prices once a year or every three to five weddings you book, that is all okay to you because it's your business. And I honestly could not imagine me with my prices now. Um, when I first started out, I mean, I did a wedding for like $800 and that is not a lot for my area at all <laughs> and i can't imagine somebody coming to me and asking for what i offer now for only 800 dollars can be a little insulting but i would encourage you not to be completely insulted by it this is how i would answer the question i kind of compiled some other photographers um, responses and like added my own flair to this so now i know if i ever get this question how i would answer it so this is how i would answer it i would acknowledge their friend's wedding so i would start off by saying hi i loved photographing Linda's wedding, it was so beautiful. And I totally understand why this is a bit confusing. I do adjust my prices every single year, which explains the difference. To respect the investment the other couples have made and to provide the best possible experience, I do not discount my services. And honestly, that's how I would end it right there. I. I wouldn't really go into, you know, I need to feed myself, I need to feed my kids, I need to do this, or like, oh, that's when I was first starting out, I'm a lot better now, so you gotta pay me, blah, blah, blah. I would just say, you know, other people, you do wanna respect the investment of other people, especially if you already have people booked at that full price, like you wanna respect their investment. And I think that's a great response, again, I kind of hodgepodge it together from other photographers. So I do hope this helps you. I hope that response helped you because it definitely helped me. Um, now I know how to respond to these kinds of things. And I think that's important for every photographer. Even if you haven't experienced any of the questions that we talked about today, you might. So knowing your response going into it will be really helpful. Whether it's through email or maybe you do a consultation call, you're not caught off guard because you have your answers and you know how much you're willing to incentivize or if you want to do discounts, you can, but if you don't, you have your answer. That's all I'm saying. You can be prepared for these situations. They won't catch you off guard. Um, so that was the whole point of this video is just, here's how you could answer these questions. So let's keep this conversation going down in the comments below. How would you answer these questions? Do you give discounts? incentives, like what does that look like for you? Um, again, we're all here just trying to help each other out, so make sure to leave it down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye.